Our guest today is Lucien Greaves. Lucien is a Harvard graduate who co-founded a very interesting group. The group is known as the Satanic Temple. He founded the group in 2012. So it's very nice to have you with us here today, Lucien. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So our first question to you is, is the Satanic Temple satanic or is it satiric? Well, we're a satanic group that uses satire as a tactic to underscore certain disparities in how different or groups and religions, organizations are treated, uh, how religion is treated as a, as a privileged class over non-religious organizations and how that really kind of conflicts with our fundamental founding principles of a secular constitutional government. So Lu Lucien, are you an atheist? I am, and we argue for the legitimacy of non-theistic religion. Our feeling is that you can't, in a pluralistic so society, privilege superstition over non-superstition. So if you have this kind of cultural identity, this uh, set of ethics and beliefs, and you've organized your life around those things, that is, for all intents and purposes, your religion. And if you're going to allow any privileges and exemptions based upon deeply held belief and religious principle, you have to extend those arguments, uh, the availability of those arguments to be made for privilege and exemption to non-believers as well. And to the United States system, uh, uh, First Amendment. Um, there were, in the 19th century, a lot of journals, well, there was one called Lucifer the Light Bearer. Are you familiar with that? where um, the free thought community was actually saying, uh, y using this as a metaphor. Yeah, there were uh, socialist movements, women's rights movements, and they would invoke the name of Satan, and it made a kind of intuitive sense. Uh, after the Enlightenment, people had to revise their thinking about what was morally correct and what was proper, and the monarchical system kind of fell apart, and people uh, started thinking in terms of liberation away from feudalistic societies. And even a non-theistic metaphorical religion can make a lot of commentary about that kind of fundamental way of organizing this mythic framework uh, by which we kind of uh, contextualize our lives. And that's what, that's what Satanism does, Satanism as a metaphor for rebellion against tyranny. And I think there's a, a, a lot of quotes. I think, remember Mark Twain saying, we never hear Satan's side of the story. Of course, hmm. Letters from the Earth, well, the whole thing the was based on that. The word Lucifer literally means light bearer, a person who bears the light, like loose and then fairy, to carry, to bear. So Lucifer can be a compliment. Well, there's this, the question is, is what, what do you view as the ultimate evil? There's some people who say that if you venerate this satanic character, you're obviously, uh, you're worshiping cruelty, evil, depravity, all those types of things. And I think that that idea comes in order to uphold the the inverse, which is that the uh, the Judeo-Christian religions have a stronghold on what is morally correct and proper, and to call that into question at all, of course, when you feel that uh, moral authority is is taken from one divine tyrant, um, then the Satan character becomes the ultimate evil. When it, the ultimate source of goodness comes from this one character in your religious text, then, uh, then everything embodied in, in the so-called opposite is, is going to be evil, including the quest for knowledge, the quest for personal autonomy and liberation, and all these kinds of other higher ideals that we strive for. Uh, so, um, Satanic Temple is a religion? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, well, I'm, People debate the semantics of that, but uh, we'll, we'll take the, the argument as far as it can go. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's more than just a, a clever little legalistic ploy. I think it, it's part of everything that we're doing to kind of try to uphold enlightenment values and, obtain, and uphold the kind of uh, secular democratic principles that we were founded upon. I think you need to recognize that people's deeply held beliefs are no less deeply held if they don't have a belief in a supernatural being overseeing their activities. So Lucian, um, the Satanic Temple has been very active on the state church front and we have run into you very early and we have done some things together. For example, um, FFRF 
and uh, the Satanic Temple had to sue Franklin County, Indiana, because our displays were being censored when they allowed a nativity scene up in December. We won that case, by the way. But right. and some, there's been some other things well, we've Florida, done together. Well, Florida, the Orlando school with right. your with your coloring book, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the school put in that was really cute. Now that was when they were allowing uh, so-called passive distribution of of Christian Bibles, and when we tried to put our literature in, a lot of it was censored, and then. Um, we sort of uh, uh, won the right to do that. And when you came in and said, well, hey, we want to put our coloring books in the schools, they closed the whole forum. <laughs> Great, that's what we wanted. But I have to say, the Satanic Temple coloring book has to be one of the funniest things I've ever seen. <laughs> hmm. Well, it was, it was funny. I was speaking to uh, one of the representatives from the Freedom From Religion Foundation when, uh, when it was asked by us if we had something we could give out for passive distribution. And we were advised that our whatever literature we had we would put out uh, could be as critical as it wanted to be of, of biblical material of the uh, of the Judeo-Christian story um, or, or stories whatever. Um, and I said at the time that, that we have our own affirmative values. That really wasn't how we were going to go about it. And it didn't matter. You saw the activity book we put out was pro-social. There was nothing objectionable about no, it other than that it was a satanic it was all temple, completely right? Benign. And it still caused a complete meltdown. But although whole... I thought that the graphics were very, uh, they, they were interesting. You're, you're missing one in the uh, in the interplay between the satanic temple and the Freedom from Religion Foundation, though. It was also the uh, the Freedom from Religion Foundation that reached out to us about the monument in Belle Plaine, the yes, Veterans right. Memorial. Be Belle Plaine, Minnesota. Minnesota. And, right, and we were approved to put up that monument. Um, I mean, to their credit, they realized that they, they didn't have a legal case to keep us out of the open forum. Uh, but then after we built the monument, they decided to shut down the forum after a good deal of complaints from the archdiocese and Catholics. But the most comical part of that whole fiasco was that uh, a pastor, uh, Pastor Brian Lynch from the archdiocese, claimed that uh, if our monument were to go on these grounds, it could lead to the molestation of children. <laughs> and he, Talk this about was a, right, irony. A objective oh inversion had, is what I we call it. Right? Yeah. Um, and that was uh, at first involving... we weren't sure if it was a threat coming from him. Yeah, but well, from we... the church, the church ought to speak about those things. That involved a uh, a monument, a Christian monument that was on public land as a, a veterans memorial. And of course, we've always pointed out there are many atheists and foxholes and agnostics and other non-believers and when uh, we complained about it then they turned it into a public forum and you jumped in with okay let's put up a <laughs> I would like to point out that we get a lot of support from veterans uh, especially uh, older veterans from foreign wars they're usually the first to speak out in our defense um, I think they've they've been around the world they see how much better it is to live in a pluralistic society rather than have the imposition of some kind of theocracy and they they see exactly what we're doing and why, and we do have a lot of people in active service within the Satanic Temple. So it wasn't just that we wanted to make a point about right. separation of church and state. We also did want to put something out that would recognize veterans who identify with us. And aren't you involved in, in an abortion, um, is it litigation right now or? Yeah, yeah, we have three uh, three lawsuits in play right now in Missouri. They just all happen to be in Missouri. And what we were doing is we were offering exemption to members of the Satanic Temple who are pregnant looking to terminate uh, their pregnancy, exemption from what they call informed consent laws over there. And the informed consent laws require that um, the woman receives a state that mandated material that claims life begins at conception and abortion will murder an individual and unique human being. We say that those are arguable positions and uh, they completely, are. yeah, <laughs> and that they they uh, they conflict with our own religion. Own, yeah, our own beliefs upon uh, upon what abortion is, based upon our deference to our religious values. So we feel that we fall under religious protection. We're we're gearing up to sue Arkansas for putting up a Ten Commandments monument on their capital grounds, which they will call a a limited public forum, while denying our monument, uh, which fell within the same. Mm -hmm. at least structural parameters we're, and everything else. We're gearing else. up to sue Arkansas, too. 
on the same same well, issue. Well, a slightly different, but same um, issue. That one, I think, would be hard for us to lose, even if a judge were inclined to rule against us by whatever means necessary, uh, just because the way Arkansas has gone about it has been so so ignorant, and, and they've. And the senator who sponsored the uh, Ten Commandments bill and helped finance it and put it up and everything else has been very open about it, the mission being one of bringing religion into the public square, bringing gospel values, uh, and, and really openly railing against the First Amendment. Well, the First Amendment is the antithesis of the First Commandment telling people what God they have to worship and what's going to happen to them if they don't worship the right God is hardly Well, that's, that's one of the greatest insults of the, uh, of the Ten Commandments debate. Uh, the idea, supposedly, being put forward in these Ten Commandments bills, which is model legislation, obviously, going, going across the nation, is, is that uh, somehow the Ten Commandments informed our constitutional values and they directly oppose and conflict. Of course, and, and we have a godless constitution, and maybe those legislators who took an oath of office to uphold the constitution ought to try to read it someday. No God, no Ten Commandments in it. Well, even then they ought to read the Bible, too. <laughs> Reading the Bible turns a lot of people into atheists, because that God character is responsible for thousands or maybe 20 million deaths. And how many deaths is Satan responsible for in the Bible? I believe it was 10. 10, yeah. yeah. And even those 10 were at the permission of God who told Satan he could kill Job's 10 children. So Satan couldn't even do it without permission from this other character. And of course we are speaking about fictional characters. We often get that complaint if we really believe in secularism, why are we trying to put up monuments at all? And we've been very clear that we never open that door. We, once that door is open and people try to establish having a religious monument on public grounds, the least we can do is ensure that viewpoint neutrality is still being respected. And may I say amen, and mm. that is exactly what is true for the Freedom From Religion Foundation. We never come in and say we want to put our Bill of Rights Nativity up in a state capitol or um, county courthouse until there's already a nativity scene, religion there. And we're there. both called bullies, aren't we? Right. Yeah. It, I mean, we just want, if, if they're going to have religion uh, in a governmental building, and if we can't get rid of that religion, then we're going to be there too. It's and a good way to test their sincerity. If they're really saying it's open to everyone, well, let's see if you really mean that. So, right. Uh, and, and we really have nothing on our side except for the U.S. Constitution and, mm -hmm. and legal yeah. precedent. Uh, we're, we're outfinanced. We're outnumbered. Uh, look at an organization like the ADF as opposed to the Satanic right. Temple. Right. Which is we, what is the $38 million a year budget or something. Right. Uh, enormous to try to entangle religion and government. Are you a full-time volunteer or, um, you mean, do you have a day job? Oh, this has destroyed my life. Yeah, no, this, <laughs> this is all, all I can do at this point. It, it's, not, it's not terribly lucrative, but it is fulfilling. Um, I, I think it, it, uh, it decreased my life, life expectancy by, by quite a bit. But the more time goes on and, and uh, the, the less I get killed, I think the better my odds are of, of going much further still. Well, we are in complete agreement with you on the need to keep state and church separate and to have equality for those of us who are non-believers. So um, it's um, really been a trip uh, watching the Satanic Temple and all you've accomplished, and um, I'm delighted to finally meet you in person, and thank you for joining us today. Great. Thank you so much.